The vaccine is coming out soon. I won't be talking about it, but I will tell you about the company behind it. The UK government has purchased 30 million doses of COVID mRNA vaccine from a company called Pfizer. The vaccine is due to be delivered in November with the potential of 100 million doses by the end of the year and 1.3 billion doses next year. News just out, Pfizer says it could be ready to apply for emergency use authorization for its COVID-19 vaccine candidate by late November. It won't be mandatory at the beginning, but judging from the large orders, a gradual plan will be implemented to persuade and incentivize people to take the vaccine and put restrictions on people that don't, along with shaming campaigns. I want to tell them that their decision, they need to understand, will not affect only their lives, which at the end of the day, it is their uh, judgment, but will affect the lives of others. Because if they don't vaccinate, they will become the weak link that will allow this virus to replicate. Some will say that this is conspiracy theory. So let's just stick to the facts. The government trusted Pfizer to vaccinate the British people. So it's logical to want to inquire into the company's track record in safety and ethics. After all, they must be trustworthy in fighting for humanity, right? Pfizer made itself one of the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world by purchasing its competitors and through aggressive marketing tactics. What I'm about to tell you is only 20% of their rap sheet, otherwise this video would be hours long, but you can go to our website where you can see the full list. Pfizer received the biggest criminal fine in US history as part of a $2.3 billion settlement with federal prosecutors for mispromoting medicines and for paying kickbacks to compliant doctors. Pfizer pleaded guilty to misbranding the painkiller Bextra by promoting the drug for uses that were not approved by medical regulators. In the 90s, they were involved in defective heart valves that led to the deaths of more than 100 people. The company had deliberately misled regulators about the hazards. The company agreed to pay $10.75 million to settle Justice Department charges. Pfizer also had a class action suit with a $60 million settlement over Resilin, diabetes medication that resulted in patients dying from acute liver failure said to be caused by the drug. In the UK, they have been fined nearly £90 million by the UK's competition watchdog for unfair pricing to the NHS after hiking up the cost of an anti-epilepsy drug by 2,500%, charging the taxpayer an extra £48 million than the actual price which is two million per year. Buying competitors and mis-selling drugs weren't the only factors in making them the giant of a company they are. Their special relations with doctors and medical professionals has also helped. In 2004, Pfizer's subsidiary agreed to pay $430 million to resolve criminal charges that it paid physicians to prescribe its epilepsy drug, Neurontin, to patients with ailments for which the medication was not approved. In 2010, a federal jury found that Pfizer committed racketeering fraud in its marketing of the drug. Pfizer disclosed that during a six-month period the previous year, it had paid $20 million to some 4,500 doctors and other medical professionals for speaking on the company's behalf. 2012, the US Securities and Exchange Commission announced that it had reached a $45 million settlement with Pfizer to resolve charges that its subsidiaries had bribed overseas doctors and other healthcare professionals to increase foreign sales. But some of you might say they are a business and they don't get to make billions a year by not being competitive. They're still trying to help humanity. Pfizer was sued in a US federal court by Nigerian families who accused the company of testing a dangerous new antibiotic called Troven on children without parents' consent and using their children as human guinea pigs. A panel of medical experts concluded that Pfizer had violated international law and the company agreed to pay $75 million to settle the lawsuits in Nigerian courts. The US case was settled for an undisclosed amount. Amid widespread criticism of high pricing for poor countries and in particular AIDS medications, 
Pfizer offered to donate a two-year supply of its drug, Diflucan, worth $50 million to the South African government. Yet in 2003, Pfizer backed away from the company's plan to license its AIDS drug for low-cost distribution in poor countries. The list goes on. I don't want to bore you with it. But ask yourself, if it was a car manufacturer, would you buy a car from them? We plan to honour our history and we will only bring to the world a vaccine that has been proven safe and efficacy. If Pfizer is trustworthy enough to be given one of the keys to vaccinate the population with something that was knocked up in a few months and with such a track record for safety and ethics, I know what I think. Do you?